Did you know? Typhoon Bofa was the strongest tropical cyclone to hit the Philippines in 2012. Typhoon Bufa is also known as Typhoon Pablo, made landfall as a Category 5 Super Typhoon with winds of 280 km per hour, affecting the southern Philippine islands of Mindanao on December 4, 2012. So, what makes Typhoon Pablo the most powerful tropical cyclone? The amount of property damaged by Typhoon Pablo has risen to almost 37 billion pesos. Pablo has destroyed 36.95 billion pesos worth of infrastructure, agricultural products, and private properties. The agriculture sector suffered the most losses at 26.53 billion pesos. Infrastructure and private property damage were 7.57 billion pesos and 2.86 billion pesos respectively. In fact, a thousand of 67 people died, 2,666 were injured, 834 were missing, and 6,243,998 were affected. Now, how and where does Typhoon Bofa form? The origins of Typhoon Bofa were first observed around November 26, 2012. Bofa formed less than 5 degrees north of the equator because of its unusual and peculiar formation. Bofa made landfall over Begaga in Davao Oriental, which is in eastern Mindanao in the southern region of the Philippines, at 4.45 a.m. on December 4th. Bofa recorded winds up to 220 km per hour in its center, 185 km per hour on average across its 700 km diameter, and 15 to 30 mm of rain each hour. The typhoon's extreme strength and unusual trajectory contributed significantly to its devastating effects on the Mindanao region and its people. But why is the Philippines vulnerable to disasters? The Philippines experienced natural disaster for a variety of reasons. Its location increases its vulnerability, which is exacerbated by climate change-related concerns. Environmental degradation has made the country more susceptible to natural calamities. Deforestation and environmental devastation are on the side. There have been more landslides and flash floods. As a result, locations that have loss of significant amount of forest have become more vulnerable to typhoon damage. And now, how do we mitigate the effects? Number one, pay close attention to TV and radio reports, and always try to get the latest information. Listen to and obey warnings and instructions issued by local governments. Number two, every community should develop and implement an adequate mitigation program. And lastly, the key to successfully combating this foe is to have awareness, education, and site preparation, as well as predictions and warning systems.